Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. Today is the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our priest celebrant this morning is Father Raymond Medina. We also welcome the special welcome to those joining us via the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM. Before we begin our Mass, please take this moment to silence your cell phones and any other electronic device. Thank you. Our opening hymn is number 55, As the Deer Longs. Please stand and sing hymn 55, As the Deer Longs.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters, as we gather here at the altar of the Lord this day to be nourished in word and sacrament, we count on the mercy and forgiveness of God, that generous mercy and forgiveness of God, for those moments in which we have failed to love God and love one another. And so let us prepare our hearts and minds to celebrate the sacred mysteries, calling to mind our sins. I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep us from all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Saripath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now, I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She laughed and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. One who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks without fault one does what is just and speaks of the truth from his heart. Whoever does not slander with his tongue, one who does justice will live in the presence of the Who does no wrong to a neighbor, who casts no slur on a friend, who looks with scorn on the wicked, but honors those who fear the Lord. One who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. 
who lends no money at interest and accepts no bribe against the innocent, such a one shall never be shaken. One who does justice will live in the presence of the A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Now that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that was so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of ages, to take away sin by, sacrif by sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord.
In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus of wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By now, hundreds, if not thousands, of marathon runners from all over Los Angeles and the world have run past the cathedral for the 36th annual Los Angeles Marathon, a 26.2 mile run from the top of Dodger Stadium through the streets of downtown Los Angeles and Hollywood to the shores of Santa Monica. Of course, running 26.2 miles to finish within three to five hours puts a lot of wear and tear, not only on the bones, muscles, tendons, and ligaments of the body, but also it puts a lot of wear and tear on the mind. Day after day, runners push themselves to build their physical endurance, dealing with and pushing through injuries. Day after day, runners battle their mind, building the mental capacity to push the body for an extra mile, to believe that you can still keep going even if you'd rather give up. And I'm no marathon runner, as you can probably tell, but I can only imagine the amount of dedication and training marathon runners must undertake get that good time. We would not be wrong to say that on race day, like today, these runners, after months and months of training, put it all on the line and give it all that they have, laying down all that they are on that 26.2 mile course. The two women we hear about in our readings this Sunday demonstrate to us what it means to literally put it all on the line and give it all that they have. It's clear that they don't hold, especially when it comes to being generous. We find that the widow in our first reading has enough to worry about, feeding herself and her son. And a drought and famine has devastated the country. She and her son were on the verge of starvation. She barely has enough to care for herself and her son. We can only imagine how troubling it must have been for her when Elijah asked for something to eat before she feeds herself and her son. But she puts Elijah first, giving him some food. And so her generosity was blessed with food lasting for her and her son for an entire year. This sense of generosity continues in our gospel reading as we find the widow offering and contributing not from the surplus or abundance of wealth, but rather from all that she had left, her entire livelihood. We know that at the time of Jesus, widows are not well-to-do kind of people. Rather, they were destitute, with very little or no means financially. However, unlike the scribes, 
this widow doesn't hold back and is unyielding in generosity. What little she had left, she made of it as an offering. And the two women from our readings exemplify generosity clearly. A generosity that seeks nothing in return, a generosity that gives from the heart, a generosity that gives regardless of the cost, a generosity that seeks no recognition, no praise, and seeks no gain. If we think about it, these two women were a little crazily for giving so generously. The woman and her son would have starved in light of the famine. The woman only had two coins and nothing more. And yet, they still gave all that they had, seeking nothing in return from the heart, regardless of the cost. Brothers and sisters, how have we experienced the generous love and care of others in our life? I'm certain that there are moments that we can count on to recognize how someone has been generous to us, whether small or large. There's a story that goes that what night some, some years ago, a stormy rain stranded a newlywed couple on a remote country road. Unable to go any further, they got out of their car and walked toward a dimly lit farmhouse. When they reached the house, an elderly couple carrying a kerosene lamp met them at the door. Explaining their situation, the young man asked the elderly couple, could we spend the night with you? A place on the floor or a few easy chairs will do. You see, we were traveling, but are now stranded by the storm. And seeing their condition, the elderly woman said, sure, we have a spare bedroom for you. The next morning, the newlywed couple got up early and prepared to leave without disturbing the elderly couple. They dressed quietly, put some money on the dresser, and went downstairs. When they opened the door to the living room, they found the old couple asleep in chairs. The elderly couple had given the newlywed their only bedroom, their only room in the house. How have we experienced the generosity and care of others? And yet, we cannot forget that while many of us experience others' generosity in our lives, and many of us have been generous to others, there is still but one who is unparalleled in generosity, generous in love, mercy, and compassion. That is, of course, our Heavenly Father. Brothers and sisters, how have we experienced the generous love and care of God in our life? A love and care that is constant and ever-present, a love that finds its greatest expression of generosity on the cross, a love given to us on the altar to nourish and strengthen us, a love that does not hold back. Brothers and sisters, this week will certainly bring its fair share of challenges and setbacks, and even perhaps some very discouraging situations. And yet we know that seeing with eyes of faith and hope, we will see a fair share of ways in which we can experience the generosity of others and God in our life. And when we do, let us be amazed at simply how generous God is to each and every one of us.
Brothers and sisters, let us now stand together with one heart and one voice we profess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the goodness of our generous and merciful Father, we place before him our prayers and our needs. For all members of the church, through God's grace, may we continue to serve him through our lives of intentional discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Catholics during the forward in mission jubilee year, that we hold nothing back in offering Jesus our whole life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, and the mourning, may God's gracious mercy bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Holy Spirit help us to bear good fruit in service to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they soon rest in the fullness of God's kingdom together with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are faithful and kind, generous and compassionate. In your wisdom, please hear and answer our prayers this day. Grant to us what we ask of you in faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, we take now a few moments to reflect on the blessings we have received this past week. Those joining virtually may donate by going to the link that appears on your screen. Those present here with us will have an opportunity after Mass to place your donations in the baskets located at the exits of the cathedral. We thank you for your continued generosity in the mission of the cathedral. Our offertory hymn is number 815, Ubi Caritas, number 815. Deus 
brothers, my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of
are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst. And when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was, on the night of the supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, in whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened, Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, bear in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching,
are now to pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. shepherd that is nothing I shall want fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful shepherd that is nothing I shall want fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful waters he leads me he revives my soul Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. He guides me along the right path 
for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil will I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for the length of days unending. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Let us pray. Nourish the sacred gift, O Lord. We give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements we have this Sunday. And this Advent season invites us to prepare spiritually for the coming of Christ with the Advent Daily Reflections for Christmas and Advent by Catherine Upchurch. During this busy time of year, Catherine's booklet offers brief, down-to-earth reflections that bring prayer and scripture into our everyday lives. This booklet is available at the Cathedral Gift Shop. In addition, Advent wreaths and Advent wreath candles are also available in the Cathedral Gift Shop. During the month of November, as we pray for our deceased brothers and sisters, we invite you to lift them up in prayer by submitting their names for inclusion in our annual Book of Remembrance. Surrounded by the light of a candle and beautiful flowers, our Book of Remembrance will be placed in the Cathedral Sanctuary, where we will pray for these beloved souls at all Masses celebrated in the Cathedral throughout the month of November. For more information on how to submit the names of your loved ones, please visit the Cathedral website. And lastly, I would like to take this time to recognize any of our visitors who are here for the very first time. If I can ask you to please stand if you are here for the first time so we can offer you a warm welcome and recognition. <clears throat> and
and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels, and we are certainly glad that you are with us here to worship this day. Before the final song, we invite you to sing with us the Salve Regina as we pray for more vocations to the priesthood and religious life. And please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by the way you live your life. The Salve Regina can be found in your ritual songbook number 1000. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita dulce do et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus exules fili heve. A te suspiramus gementes et plentes in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo advocata nostra illos tuos misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Et Iesum benedictum fructum ventris tui Nobis post hod exilium ostendem. O clemens, O pia, O dulcis virgo Our closing hymn is number 865, We Belong to You, number 865. We belong.